tonight, YouTube. For those of you that had decided to sacrifice for my channel on a Friday night, NBA All-Star Friday night, let me just say thank you. And first and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, let me give respect to this man. This is the one take big dog. I got to give this man respect. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I had made me a whole list of jokes I was going to call his ass after he <laughs> made that statement that Peacemaker was going to be one of the best comic book shows of the year. I was prepared to totally bash this dude at the finale. I was going to call him one take little puppy. I was going to call him the no take big puppy. I was going to call him 50 take puppy. But you know what? Because this man was right, I had to take them same jokes and throw them on myself. I am no longer Lamont Tyson life games. I'm Lamont Tyson no games. Because one take big dog. <laughs> You nailed it, my brother. You was hey. absolutely right. Peacemaker was banging. They fixed John Cena. Take your victory lap on how you felt about the finale. Listen, listen. L Lamont, I appreciate you for being a man of integrity, man. You know, most I, I people, am, man. Most, most people, you know, they'll shy away from it, and they'll say, like, oh, no, I actually still was that good. But I respect you. That's, one of, that's, that's why I love coming here. Cause I respect your work. Now, as far as this season finale goes, man, let me tell let me tell you a little something. Let me tell you, I'm gonna be honest. The way the episode started, I was nervous. I said, "Uh oh." I said, "I said, don't do it to me now." I said, "Don't do it to me now." When we had the vigilante and peacemaker, they just I'm like, "Uh oh." I yes. Said, this this this, yeah. this feels this feels kind of off. I said, "I know." Set up. I'm thinking this for the finale is gonna be straight, you know, uh, uh all the arcs that concluded and everything. I'm thinking yeah. you're gonna get action. And then it did it. I said, oh no. Oh no. And it just kept getting better and better and better. I this is how you end a series, people. Mm -hmm. One thing I, I, I just I, I try to like hit home for anybody. When I'm watching a show, is you have to give me some good characters, but you can give me great episodes throughout. But if you fumble the ending, people, that's that's the last thing people are gonna remember. Peacemaker said, "No, <laughs> we are going to show you how to conclude a story," and I loved it for it. That's the end. Probably one of my favorite um, season finales. For a superhero show, period. Just mm. it, 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 it did it did everything. Well, like I said, it started off kind of weird, but like once it really got going, once you saw like the direction they were taking, it mm -hmm. nailed it. And, and I know, I know, there's some moments at that end I can't wait to talk about with you. Oh, 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 well, let me go ahead and give the people a little taste of the essence of this show based on some video clips I put together for y'all that jumps right into what the one tape big dog is talking about. I just can't wait. You're late, you fucking dickheads. Go fucking on fish, asshole. I'm so fucking sick of that rumor. It's not a rumor. Fuck you, Barry. <laughs> One take. That's how you end the show. It's yeah. let, let me let me let me break that down so you can rebuttal. Number one, it's embarrassing that your ass show up late, and you're supposed to be the top of the ticket. Okay, mm -hmm. you, and, and I I hate being late. Let me just say that I hate being late. <laughs> so number one, your ass show up late. Number two, they proved that they didn't need you anyway, and really and truly. Nobody on this team is super powered. And Waller thought that this was such a huge threat that she needed to bring in the big guns. And that joke back and forth about Aquaman fucking fish, which he really does if he's going to fuck Ma Ma Myra. Yeah. Bruh. You, 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 if you are a true DC fan, you could look at that and be upset too, one take. Because yeah. you, you jump from calling... 
you ain't go from the the, the B squad, the C squad. You jump all the way to Team A. Superman hanging in the sky, Wonder mm-hmm. Woman down there, but they was missing somebody one take. Where the hell was Batman? I I was wondering that myself because I'm like, if Aquaman got there, how come Batman couldn't get there? That's what I'm trying to figure out, man. You got to tell me something because normally Batman, the first one on the scene, normally. (laughs) What were they trying to tell us, one take? What what were they trying to say? And remember, we might be seeing this show in Gotham next year. Remember all the stuff that Kate, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's one of the things I'm thinking because as more than uh, I get, Metropolis is under attack. Uh, Atlantis has some stuff they're dealing with, but the place that is constantly being oh, destroyed man. or oh, taken man. over by some entity is Gotham. Okay, it's Gotham. Oh, Batman's man. just like y'all going in there. Y'all do that. I'm dealing. With, the Joker just set a, a, a children's hospital on fire. Uh, Scarecrow just just infected the water. Yeah, I'm gonna handle that. I'm dealing with I'm dealing with stuff over here, people. And I'm just a rich guy in the suit. Okay, so y'all super powerful people gonna deal with that. I don't got time for butterflies to be falling flying down my throat up my ass. You know what I'm saying? So just chilling. <laughs> One take. They gotta be in Gotham next year. They got- have to be in. Like like I swear that was an Easter egg. They didn't leave out Batman for nothing. Um, we've all, me and you and the fellas have already talked about the connections to the sister and the connections mm-hmm. to the girlfriend. And I've told you that in the karmic lure, that person was connected to Batgirl. So I could see it happening. But do you want to see more of the butterflies? Are you ready for them to move on to another villain? You know that is a great question because mm-hmm. the fact is that the fact that they uh, uh the peacemaker let golf live kind of signifies that I think the butterflies are gonna play a part still. Yep. But mm-hmm. kind of, okay, I, I'm gonna put it like this: kind of, kind of how uh, a white dragon was like the sub villain this arc. Mm-hmm. I can see the butterflies being the sub villain. For next season, but we still have an overall uh, another person that's over everything. Okay, I I can see that. So we talked about this cow, and mm-hmm. I recall you and B. Avery saying y'all thought that the cow might have been taken hostage by the butterfly. Yes. Yes, and and that. when you see the way that they had belts around this dude and the electricity. I was starting to say, damn, these dudes know, these dudes know, they must have been in the writer's room with gun when he wrote this. <laughs> the, the way it looked, I'm thinking that the thing is hostage. But it turned yeah. out, well, in all honesty, we really and truly don't know. I mean, we they really, never really, we, we don't know. However, having said that, are you comfortable with the way they killed the cow and considering that heartfelt speech that was made to John Cena at the very end before he sent Adebayo in there with the torpedo helmet. What did all that invoke in you? Was you starting to feel a little sorry for the aliens? Did you think Cena was going to, excuse me, Peacemaker was going to do it? Talk to me about that ending scene because that was a lot. That was definitely a lot. This is the scene where, this this is why I think I fell in love with it, okay? Because obviously, Everything ended with his arc last episode with him with him killing his dad. But the fact that Goff is like, yo, you you're like us, you know, mm-hmm. you, you do things, you you just like us. And I'm like, damn, she's making a lot of sense right now. He she might was. just be like, you know what? I am about to, like people are terrible. You know, we are about to just destroy ourselves. You know what? Yep. I got you. You go that way. I go that way. Are we gonna send this thing to the next place? Because they, his crew, his, uh, his team had betrayed him already. Mm-hmm. So he was still pissed off about that. And if he does this, he technically can still get away. But when he made that decision to send out of bio, shout out to out of bio because I think she's just been absolutely fantastic as well. But when he makes the decision to send her 
until that mm-hmm. Kyle, I was just like, yo, this guy's character is still developing this late in the show. I thought, it was, I thought it was done. Like the storylines that they have and, and the way that you you actually, in all honesty, you understand where the butterflies are coming from. Yeah. But for yeah, him to, yeah. yeah, for him to like make the decision like, no, we have to let people make their own choices. And it, even if it results in them like sabotaging themselves, we, we, we can't take away people's free will, which is what the butterflies do. They take away That's people's what they do. free will. Yep. I was just like, shout out to James Gunn because this yeah. was incredible. An incredible, oh, uh, look, look, the thing that they threw in there that I did not expect whatsoever. It, it was a great, as the military dudes would say, quagmire. It was great because for a minute there, I really thought John Cena. Peacemaker, excuse me. I really <laughs> thought he was going to be like, you know what? I'm going to help y'all. Because look, that is the same butterfly that tried to make friends with him that could have killed him in this same scene and yes. didn't. Yes. Let him, let him live because like we said, remember, we even talked about that. We even talked about was it going to be a, a, a showdown between Cena and Golf. We talked mm-hmm. about that and what would happen. And you said she would let him live. I remember it. I mean, like, I'm telling you, y'all must have been in James Gunn's writer's room. So. <laughs> because, because, hey. you know, she let him live, man. And I was just like, whoa, what is Cena going to do? Um, it, it, it was... I was just sitting there. I was trying to enjoy all of it, but I'm having to sit there and bite my tongue because you're in my head. <laughs> I done told you this going to be one of the best. And, and, and I could just remember the disgusted look on my face like someone had put some poop right here. I was just like, no, no, damn. John Cena, really? <laughs> Spinner belts? No. Dude, yes. I bought every bit of it man and let's talk about your boy die beard man let's talk about die beard oh we my. let's talk about what he did so he sacrificed when when eagerly god god help eagerly po- <laughs> god, god help eagerly god lord help I me mean, that po bird when eagerly was not able to put the right helmet on top of that barn and die beard and ladies and gentlemen that is be Avery this is not an illusion this is not a butterfly. <laughs> that is B. Avery, just my opinion. What's, What's going, going on, on y'all? I'm good. Going good, man. How y'all doing? Glad, glad to have you, man. Uh, before I finish my statement, B. Avery, give me your opinions on this finale and how you felt about the season. I just gave one take a victory lap. I told him I had <laughs> jokes waiting for him. I took back all my jokes and took his jokes and picked on myself. Uh yeah man uh me and El- can y'all hear me well but um yeah me and me and Elliot talked about this man but honestly it, it was a mixed bag for me um oh, oh. it was stuff I liked it was some stuff I did not like oh. um mm-hmm. I thought the cameo at the end was like really shoehorned and forced and I, I don't know I mean um no I, I'm just effing with y'all bro this thing was off the top. oh I, I love oh, it. oh god I, uh, I, I, this, I, I, I loved it. I love this it, love dude, it, love man. it, love it, love it. I cannot <laughs> wait to talk to y'all about it. I'm excited for what's to come next. Uh, I, I mean, I do kind of feel that that way about the cameo at the end with the Justice League, but right, I, at the same right, time, right, I don't right. care. You know what I'm saying? I'm just right, like, you know, right. it, it don't matter. I'm, I was happy to see him. I'm not disappointed. So, uh, yeah, I, I loved it, man. I loved it. Where's Batman? Why was Batman not in that cameo? You know, that's a good question. I think it's like a... I don't want to say a rights thing because they own all their characters, but mm-hmm. they're just really sensitive about putting Batman on TV for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. You you got to oh, you, your uh, guess is as good as mine. A bat, a bat bar, a bat embargo or something like that, where they, they don't they try not to use that character too much. I think I was looking I was looking up the embargo for like the Batman today, and that just so happened to pop up. It's like they limit the use of the character of Batman, I think, with, like, popularity or something like that. Yeah. Or just, like, might steal from, like, other, uh, the focus of, like, other shows and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, man. Um, uh, that, that's, that's, that sounds good to me, so, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, one take back to you and, and Die Beard. 
Do you like the way they brought him full circle from he sacrificed and he got the helmet to a low level, not the lowest level, but he got it far enough, gets out, and we get to understand why the man is still trying to dye his damn beard. And I'm like, bro, you need to fix it a little better. But talk to me about how you felt about dye beard. I'm going to be honest. I can, I won't even call him dye beard no more, man. <laughs> I, can't, I can't bring myself to call him dye beard no more. I felt so bad. For, I'm like, okay, first the scene was happening. I'm like, dude, you, you know, now you at, you, you're in the front now. Because every other time mm-hmm. you came to the rescue, you're sneaking up. You snuck up on Judo Master. You snuck up on uh, uh, the, the, the Ku Klux Klan members. Uh, you <laughs> snuck up on the gorilla. But, like, now you front and center. And, like, everything's on you. And you're nervous. You're throwing up everywhere. I'm like, come on, man. Get us together, Economos. But when they ask the question about the beard, when uh, mm-hmm. I think his name is uh, uh, Fitzsimmons asked a question about the beard. And he starts telling him, like, how... You know what I'm saying? I never had a girlfriend and uh, I'm mm-hmm. underpaid and I'm just yep. like, damn. He said, and I didn't think nobody would notice me until one guy kept pointing out. I'm just like, what the hell? How did they because that is such a small just joke. You think that's just a throwaway thing yet it has this it, it's big towards his character. I feel super bad for him. I'm like, yeah, I can't call him Die Beard no more. I I feel terrible for this guy. I, like it's kind of sad. But it's just like, damn, man. That's why it really bothered him. You know, when people they kept calling him Doc here. I'm like, Jesus Christ. So, Behavior, how would you feel about the Economos and the sacrifices he made? This man broke his leg and the bone, the bone came through his meat trying to help this team. How did you feel about the way they kind of ended his story arc? Oh, yeah, man, that was a big surprise. And um, that was a really touching moment because, like, once a big dog said, I feel sorry for him, too. You know, uh, it, I, I can't make fun of him no more either. Um, at the same time, it is kind of him asking for a pity party. But, you know, he was put on the spot. I don't necessarily understand why he had to tell the truth. Like, right. you know, like I, you, I didn't either. Just, you could have just made up something, bro. You know, you just, you know, put it out there. But. I mean, I, I guess he just, that was his cry for help. You know, he'd been hurting on the inside for so long. And I'm not judging the man because I do respect this character because he done came through the clutch dang yes. every episode uh, in yep. the show. Yep. Saving him from who we thought the Gorilla Grah was with the with the chainsaw. Yes. He, yes. He, he stepped up and, and ran over a Judo Master early, I think in episode three with the, with the truck. Um, yeah, you know, he the one that put the bomb in the in the barn. You know, he look, he he freaked out, but at the same time, given what he was looking at, you know what I'm saying? That's gonna really mess up his mind. You're like, whoa, wait a minute, I we are not in Kansas anymore. You know what I'm saying? He was like, we need to get the fuck out of here right now. Like, I was frustrated, but I feel him. You know what I'm saying? Like, B, he it, got it, <laughs> he got it low enough. He yeah, yeah, low he, enough. you know, he he had he has really been the underdog and come through. Um and to save the day, he he, you know, so yeah, I, I gotta give it to him. But yeah, it, it was a great moment from him. So I, I like how they wrapped him up. Yeah, I, I I agree too, man. Anytime someone can put their heart on the line, like like you said, baby, he could have lied, but he didn't. And maybe, yeah. maybe for him, lying would have gave away his cover. So he just went with what was on the heart. The butterfly bought it. And he he turned around and, you know, he got a couple of steps away before they jumped on top of him. So, and also I think in that moment too, he wanted the team to know y'all been pooping on me. Y'all been talking about my beard. Y'all been treating me like I'm not even a legitimate member of this team. And these are the issues I've been keeping bottled up, but yet I still was able to get over here and get this helmet over here. And I did the whole thing. So I was glad they sent him out kind of like a G to some degree. Oh, yeah. And, and just real quick, I just find it uh, hilarious that he, he broke his leg, like you said, as soon as he crossed the thing. And then the next shot, he done crawled his big ass way over there. I'm like, how the hell? You know, it, it's just, bro, he was he was rolling, bro. He was like, I can you know, it, I, I, it was it was hilarious to me. I, I was like, not, not, you know. not, not only his big ass was crawling, but at the end, he was walking with very limited help from Adebayo. Right. Yeah, very, yeah. very limited help. He was right. walking. Right. Uh, right. But you know, if, if you look, this is the shot you want to see when heroes have fucked shit up. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Th- this is it. 
This mm -hmm. is what it looked like. So, B. Avery, what was your opinion when the Justice League popped up and John Cena just straight cussed him out? Hey, man, I feel him, man. He tired. He don't give a <laughs> damn, you know? If, 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 he got, if, if John Cena died right there or Chris died right there, he'd be like, hey, you know, I, I had a good one. You know what I'm saying? I started out bad. Uh, I had an effed up childhood. It ain't my fault. Yeah. You know, I yeah. took him out. So, you know, hey, if this is it, this is it. I don't care no more, man. Leave me alone. You know, he, he could have went home or went to jail. It didn't matter to him. You know what I'm saying? It would have. He just like, I'm, I'm tired. I just, I just want to go to bed. So, man, that was. But I, I, I was happy though. I, yeah, I was happy though when they popped up. I was like, oh, this is, a, you know, Justice League. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, oh wow, it was, it was, it was. It was I was happy, but at the same time, I can understand why some DC fans was mad because you done called in the A squad for something that the suicide, a junior suicide squad lead can handle. I mean, really ain't nobody on um, Peacemaker's team got real deal powers like that. And you handled a situation that Adebayo thought was so big and so grass that you had to call in the Justice League. And, and I love the part where Cena cussed them out. Because that lets you know that, hey, bro, we our own team. We can handle shit that they call you in for. So going back wherever you needed to go. So for that part, you know, I felt like it was good. And they, they can, even if there that is a complaint by some people, they can fix that with one line of dialogue from one of the members of the Justice League in the next movie or whatever. Like, she could be talking to, somebody could be talking to them on the phone like, you called us in for that. I mean, dang, we, we could have came in. Even if they would have succeeded, we could have came in and swept it up in seven seconds. You know, don't do that no yeah. more. Or, or what? You know what I'm saying? They, they could right. do it. Like, yeah, you time. wasted all time or any, yeah. Yeah. anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, you yeah. know just, just a little well, line, well, you know. They can have Batman say that. Batman can be like, I didn't show up because it wasn't worth our time in the first place. Yeah. Bam, yeah. bam. There you go. Yeah. That's perfect. That there you go. That's perfect. But this, right. this is what me and one take think with some of the information we learned in the season. Um, be able. We think that they're gonna be in Gotham next season, uh, with the connections to um Batwoman and Adebayo and the girlfriend. We think that they're gonna wind up being in Gotham next year. It's just a matter of would you want to see them have to fight the butterflies again, or are you ready for them to have to fight a new evil or a new have a new antagonist? Uh, I'm cool with either, man. You know, uh, I, if if you put a gun on my head, I would say uh, a new antagonist. What's up, Moochie? What's up, Tressa? What's up? Uh, uh, I, I would say, yeah, I would say a new, um, a new foe. But I mean, it's the butterflies. You know, that that could have only been like a fraction of, of the whole race of society. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. maybe, maybe they could have went to uh, the butterflies went to multiple planets, and we got Team X two nine. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that, that was only 2% of that whole armada. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, right. you know, the, the, the cousins Ooh. or the babies or something. But the, the queen, super mother, god, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But uh, something, let, me, let me piggyback off what B just said. Because what if the butterflies did go to another planet and they in, uh, got into some stronger aliens? And then they come in the oh. house. So now you don't have to you don't have to Ooh. fight just like butterflies and human bodies. You have to fight butterflies and like alien bodies. You know what that makes me think of one take big dog? Is the last Justice League animated movie where the um uh, the uh dark size forces combined that they, they oh the uh the doomsdays was, mixed with parademons, yes, and made yeah. them super strong. You know what I'm saying? They weren't just cannon fodder no more. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know something like. I mean, and they may not, may not be that strong, but I think you get what I'm talking. What I'm trying to say. I mean, I mean, I technically, you could you could have them. You could have them go into um, Martian Manhunter's people and have all his abilities: fly, um, resolute. You gonna need you gonna, gonna really need the Justice League. Dude. Yeah, you gonna need you gonna need you gonna need Justice League for that. <laughs> Or, or hell, really, all you need is Batman because he probably set a fire big enough to burn up all of them because that's his, you know that's his weakness. Yeah. But um, I like where y'all going with this. I would love to see them do that. But either way, I would say both of you guys have made me from now on. I'm trusting Mr. Gunn. I'm trusting him. I'm trusting him. He made John Cena as great a light as possible with Peacemaker. I mean, mm -hmm. last the last two episodes, I haven't thought of John Cena as a wrestler no more. I thought of him as Peacemaker. That's where he mm -hmm. went at with me for that. And um, I do want to ask you guys about hardcore. Was at any point in time y'all was thinking that that butterfly 
was going to actually get in her body and use her. Nah, nah. You didn't think so, B? I knew, uh, I mean, I was confident Adebayo was going to come and take it out. You know, I'm not going to lie, man. With them skills. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Boy, them, uh, them, them, yeah, we gonna talk, have to talk about them skills she got, but bro, uh, bro her, her like hardcore and vigilante. I started yeah. thinking like, damn, are they finna kill this? They finna yeah. kill one of them? Right. I got, yeah. I can, I got nervous because I'm thinking they just killed somebody last episode. The show's not afraid mm-hmm. to kill out people. And then we saw when mm-hmm. uh, I, I remember we last week we were talking about maybe they're gonna find a way to get the butterflies out. Yeah, that completely went out the window when I saw uh uh vigilante split uh uh um what's the guy's name uh Fitzsimmons the cop when he split mm-hmm. his head I said oh no they're not saving any of these people all of these people are dying and so when that happened to vigilante and, and hardcore I'm like oh wow I I am incredibly nervous right there I do not <laughs> want either one of these characters to die like I was like man that got me. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have any. I, I I thought the whole time that the butterfly wasn't going to get her. Um, I just didn't see what would be the point in allowing her to be taken over by a butterfly in that moment. She had been, you know, injured pretty bad. That we think, um, you know, she had been shot, and so had my boy Vigilante. He had been shot, and so I didn't yeah. see why they would do it other than maybe it was just a vengeful thing. I just didn't see where they would go this late in the story to have yeah. that happen to her. I agree. I agree with you too. I knew uh, Adebayo was going to come and take it away, but I was nervous. Like once a big dog, I, I did think when she got shot, I, I thought the, and, and vigilante, I thought the exact same thing you said, like, Oh damn, are they about to die? Well, they could die. Well, they did kill somebody in the last episode. And this is a suicide squad. Damn, they about to die. You know what I'm saying? Right. So exactly, right. exactly. So I was afraid of from that point, but when uh, all of a sudden uh, Autobio turned into a ninja assassin, you know, I was like, okay, she's gonna stay today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't, I don't know where that came from. She was hitting that hole. You know, man, I, I was like, <laughs> dude, was, John Wick, with like, it, you know what I'm saying? Bro, <laughs> that chick turned into straight ninja game. I you know, was like, yeah. damn. Seriously, that's that's the no, best way to real. describe it. <laughs> for for real, like yeah. all of a sudden, you go from you only had like one two shots in the whole series. Now all of a sudden, you ninja gating minus the sword with gun. Right. I was like, bro. And, and, and remember how she looked when she shot uh, Judo Master in the chest? Look like she'd been doing that yeah. for a minute. So she been yeah. playing. Uh, Elliot, uh, Elliot was talking about she been playing all of us. That's where her, my her mama was saying like, you got skill, you got skill, and she was probably mm-hmm. playing it down. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Big, yeah, big I, 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 I roll around. I, yeah, that's what I that's what I thought back to. I'm like, man, she hit judo matter, ju, judo master, perfect, like like square dab in the chest. So I'm like, yeah, that's she been like keeping up. <laughs> yep. So yep. Spe- speaking of the judo master, we saw an appearance by judo master in this episode. Um, where do you think his fellow? Where do you think they're going to go with his story arc? And I'll start with you, big um, big dog. Man, I'm thinking he might go link up with the because I think they're the 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 butterflies mentioned them having another base in Maine, and I'm mm-hmm. thinking Judo Master might know something about it. And he might go talk to, uh, to those other butterflies and stuff. Okay, but I, I I personally thought like he's going when golf was just hanging around. There were so many people I thought golf was going to fly into. I thought he was going to go into uh, Kia uh, Adebayo's wife. I thought he was going to go in Judo Master, but he didn't go in any of them. So I was just like, but yeah, I think Judo Master was probably headed to Maine to link up with the other butterflies because I, he actually believed in what they were trying to do. Uh, B. Avery, what do you think? And it, do you think there's any chance Judo Master is a butterfly? Uh, no, I don't think there's a chance that. Uh, I think they, I think they said that in the show. Um, but I could be wrong and they could be lying or the characters that said it could not know themselves. Um, I do remember when I we was watching the final showdown, I was saying to myself, man, I hope Judo Master shows up and teams up with our people. That didn't happen. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, he showed up at the end and he was really hurt, you know, he crying and eating his chips. I don't know what some of them chips. Uh, that's funny as hell, though. They just being he random. Stay, he um, stay eating. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I do want to see him. 
I do want to see him come back. He, I mean, he has to. He didn't die. But mm-hmm. what what one thing what you just made me think of that I didn't think of before is uh, they talked about their base in Maine. There still has to be butterflies over there right now that we don't know. Has to be. You know what I'm saying? Has to be. And I didn't think of that. I'm thinking, okay, the butterflies are gone. Or the the one, there there was only one left on earth that we saw at the very end. Um, And I'm thinking, no, there has to be people in Maine there to hold down the base. It wouldn't just be empty. Mm -hmm. You know, they was about to receive the the cows. So it had to be somebody Mm -hmm. there to receive it. So, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. But the problem is how long can these things survive without the cow's milk. And that was the only yeah. cow that they had at this moment. So w- yeah. what, what are they going to do right now? And then if they do decide, hey, we need to go figure out what happened, you know, we got to get some retribution, Golf is going to die because Golf is making pals with um, Peacemaker right now. You know, Golf really mm-hmm. ain't got no beef with Peacemaker. And then the thing with that is how long is Golf going to actually live when Peacemaker run out of the cow's juice? Well, considering it was a lot left at that little base, mm-hmm. it could like I'm I'm pretty sure that was a big supply because they like they're, they're it might just be buried under some rubble now, but I think there was a big supply over the of that little you know that juice down now. So, and that's what I'm also thinking like because they were shipping out a lot, that's probably gonna right. hold the ones in Maine over for a while as well. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll throw it to you like this, B.A. We know Amanda Waller is going to always be connected to this team. Could yeah. she find a way to get one of her crazy scientists to make a synthetic blend or whatever this stuff is and try to use golf and use golf to use some butterflies for a future show? Of course. Uh, and so I, I look forward when you work we, we, when you're working for WB so you can write these great stories you're coming up with right now. Stop it. Uh, you know, I'm, you know I'm saying because I'm I, I'm cool with it, you know what I'm saying? Uh I, I, yeah, I, I can do it. Hey, hey, I'm just I'm just telling how it is, man. I'm like, oh wow, that's a great idea. So good job. Yeah. Uh, but also we gotta consider the fact that her, her daughter betrayed her, threw her under the betrayed bus. her. He did betray you know what I'm saying? Yes, you think did. you think you she think she'll kill her own? You think she'll kill her own daughter? No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's Amanda Waller, bro. Mm-mm. No. It's Waller. No, what? Think think about her. Well, yes, you're right. But she would. What Waller would do be Avery to extract revenge and punishment on her daughter. She wouldn't kill the daughter. She would get the girlfriend and torture the girlfriend Ooh. while her while her daughter is looking Ooh. at her. Damn, that's what I'm, I'm saying, bro. With WB, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and hire this dude. Get your HBO Max subscriptions up. It's going well, well, down. Well, if, if y'all want to know what I'm really going to work on, I'm trying to work on Thundercats. I'm trying to okay. remaster a new bro. Thundercats. I, I got half my story all lined up. And when I find someone to team up with, I'm going to bring Thundercats and Silverhawks to the big screen together. That's what I'm working on. But um, man, yeah, man, man she... Waller is so evil and so vindictive and so vengeful. She is the type that would Disgusting. capture yeah. what whoever you love, torture them in your face mm-hmm. until you submit yourself to whatever her demands are. That's how Waller operates. Yeah, that's man. how Waller operates. Yeah, that's throw it off. That's a good idea right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm really geek too. <laughs> I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm <laughs> trying to tell you, man. That that, that that's how they get down, man. Wall- yeah. Waller's like that. Y'all know yeah. it. Y'all know W. Y'all know um DC comics. Y'all know how dark they get. You've seen to be honest with you, the Waller we got in the Suicide Squad, she's not as evil as Waller can really get. She's like scratching the surface. Waller was a mean evil bad word i mean well, really mean and evil and she she had that chip on her shoulder because she was a woman she was a minority and she was surrounding herself by rich white dudes in particular lex luthor and lex luthor curry favor with this woman because she was so ruthless she was lex luthor's granny goodness as granny goodness is to dark side that's what Walla was well, well, she right. was about to kill uh, uh, Bloodshot's daughter if he didn't join the if he didn't join the squad. That's so. see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Crazy. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're yeah, right. man. So, right. um, having said that, fellas, I'll, I'll get ready to pivot you guys to Bel Air with this final question. I'll go both. Cool. I'll go you first, behavior. What what direction would you like to see next season's um, Peacemaker go in? Where 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 would you want the story to go? 
Man, I'm so glad because I, I was like, man, I don't want to interrupt because there's one more point I want to make. And you just mm -hmm. asked the same question. Instead of where I want to see Peacemaker go, I would like to see a piece, a, a spinoff show from, from this. But one character. Oh. Oh. After seeing Vigilante whoop all that ass, yes. all that choreography, yes. I, I, I want to yes. show with him. I want an yes. origin story. Yes. I got to know who trained yes. him or whatever. Yes. I got to find out. Mm -hmm. That boy <laughs> right there was serious. Oh, I know man. You right. I know. Oh, <laughs> man. I was, oh, oh, oh. He was, oh, shing, shing, shing. Mm -hmm. you, you just too bad you don't got me widescreen, bro. But, man, I was loving it, man. <laughs> bro. That was, yeah, I, I got I to gotta see more than that. I got to see. So, this. so that was kind of my only gripe about the finale. I wanted him to have a grander exit because really? I've been y'all. Yeah, I, I wanted him to do a little more because y'all know oh, okay. I've been caking up for him and Eagly the whole season. I told y'all from episode one, these are my two people, him and Eagly, and I'm neither satisfied. one of my characters. I, I just wanted him to. I would have rather him been the one that got torpedoed through the cow. Then out of bio, you know, <laughs> just just give me that. <laughs> I give you that. I give you that. Yeah. You know, because you already don't hurt my feelings where you let Eagly decide. You know what? Fuck it. I'm not dropping this helmet on the barn. I'm going to chase this worm. You know what I'm saying? Fuck yeah. it. You know. So uh, uh, you know, yeah. You don't ruin. You don't ruin my Eagly. So I needed a little bit. But the that's, vigilante that would have been like, wee. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> he he yeah. would have been talking so much junk, getting ready to go through that cow. It would have been yeah. nuts, but um, that's a good point, B. Adrian. One take. What about you, man? Oh man, I don't even know. I mean, I just got to talk about the one moment when he jumps out the at the, out the hospital window at the end. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm almost positive. I, I can almost guarantee he jumped from like three stores and ended up hurting himself. I had to go right back in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had to go right back in. I thought we were going to get like a little snippet or something because he's that type of person. But yeah, man, uh, as far as next season goes, man, um, I'm hoping we get a couple of more obscure DC characters, man. Just like, I want to okay. see Kite Man. And, and peace my game. Mm -hmm. We know Kite Man is actually a uh, Batman villain, so I think that's gonna yep. like play into yep. like the whole Gotham stuff. So I want to see like yes. some more obscure uh, villains, just like maybe have them as like henchmen or something like that for whoever is like the main antagonist of next season. But I want to see something like that. And but I'm I'm connected to all of these characters now, so I'm really nervous for like what they're gonna do with them because we've seen that this show is not afraid to kill out people. Ain't afraid to do it, and they did a good job. And I, I noticed you you guys didn't really say much about anything in terms of hardcore. Do you want to see more of her? What are your thoughts on her going next season? And then I'll get you guys to Bel Air. Yeah, I absolutely want to see yeah. more of her. Like, she was one of the shining moments. The way her character – now – one thing I think I think most of us are wrong gone is we thought Chris was gonna get the drive before the season. Was Just over. about to yes. say that, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of glad it didn't happen. I am too. It, uh, I am too. Yeah. I am too. A, a, a simple a simple hand grab is starting to do a lot. You know, it, it, it shows more than the, than the actual sex thing. B, I think you might know what I'm talking about when I when I when I bring it up. A simple mm -hmm. hand grab. Yeah. Oh man, that's over my head, bro. Damn, euphoria, euphoria. Mix it and say it. Oh, okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Well, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're right, you're right. So, fellas, you talk about um, shows that are going to be developed and seeing some of the more obscure characters. This hit the press today. 50 Cent is in development with DC for an <coughs> excuse me, adaptation of Zero, who's going to be black in the lure. Um, anybody excited for that? One take, I know nothing about this character. Very the I when I say very little, I mean very little. Talk to me about this character. Wait, I'm right there with you. Okay. I, I have no idea who that is. Oh he, Sam Hurt. I, 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 see, I seen him one time in a comic story where he had to fight, um, golly, I'm, I'm, what, the robot that Superman is always having to fight that uses kryptonite for his energy. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, um, 
the, oh, like like Terminator. Yeah, he looked yeah. like Terminator a little bit. Him. Uh, anyway, oh, yeah. this guy, this guy fought him because he's kind of got some of that in in his uh, makeup too. And um, he went toe to toe with dude, and didn't lose. That's all I'll say. And Fifty Cent gonna make him black. So, and it's gonna be a TV series. Um, hmm. I give yeah. it a chance. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it a yeah, chance. I'm gonna give it. But seeing this just makes me more like, yeah, Metallo, Metallo. Appreciate that, my people. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) When I saw this, it just gave me more hope that the stories I got in my brain, one of these days, I'm going to be able to get them funded. And I'm going to be able to tell you guys a good story on the screen myself, because I got a lot of stuff running around in my head. And um, this this makes me feel good. Makes me feel good. Yeah. But the other thing that makes me feel good, ladies and gentlemen, it's Bel Air time. And if you're finding us for the first time, please subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to B. Avery's channel. Subscribe to the One Take Big Dog, who is really the One Take Big Dog, my people. He made an assertion that was right. And you need to subscribe to these brothers' channels because they do good work. The brand new Bel Air, we're going to talk about episode four. But before I do that, I want to get you guys' thoughts on how you feel about the series overall before we deep dive into episode four. And I must be honest, at first I had no intention of watching this because I grew up a 10 year old watching the first one. And I was a little afraid that this was going to be one of those remakes that didn't work. Someone that wanted to do an interview with me said, Lamont, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. I said, okay, I'm gonna give it a shot. Within the first four minutes, I'm hooked because they plan a song Philadelphia Freeway, Jay-Z, and Beanie, that was like part of my growing up process. There was so many times in football practices and stuff, I didn't want to show up. I hear that song, my juices is going. And then I just kept watching. I was like, man, yo, this shit right here, this is fire. And having said that, it's been fire every single episode. But uh, one take, I'll go to you first, man. Thoughts overall on the series so far? I am exactly like you. When me and V talked about it, I it's not even the fact that I wanted to hate it. That's how bad it is. Just got how much I love the original. Like, I'm yeah. not a hater, but I went into this thing <laughs> wanting to despise it. Just why I was like, yeah, man, leave leave you well enough alone, bro. Don't mess with right. don't mess with the goat. You know what I'm saying? And man, they got me. And I was just like, yo, this show. Is incredible. incredible. Like, I, I'm not gonna lie. When, once I find out another episode was that came out yesterday, I was so happy to watch it. Like, oh, <laughs> me yeah. too. Let me stop. Every, me let me stop everything I'm doing. Let me watch this, I, bro. I am <laughs> hooked. I am completely hooked and sold on this show. It, it's it's one of the best. I think you said. I think B said. It. It's one of the best times I've had watching TV. Wow, man. Thank you. Be Avery. I, look, go ahead and preach to the choir, my brother. I'm going to start playing the violin while you preach. I'm, I'm playing oh, yeah. the hell out of this bit. I'm preaching. Like I said, Bruh. man, this is uh, my number one priority on my channel now. You know what I'm saying? Above anything else. I'm I'm more interested in covering this than a Marvel property. You know what I'm saying? Like, real talk. I'm, bro, I mean, I'm, I'm just the simple fact, bro. It's just nice to just see so many black people on TV at one time. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Now, yes. Whether they're rich, middle class, or poor, and these happen to be ex- extremely rich. You know, I mean, we already had that from the original show, but I mean, they have to be billionaires now, or at least in the hundred uh, right. uh, uh, in the eight figure range. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's just nice. You know, I mean, it's a bit of escapism, but hey, I don't give a damn. I mean, but like one take, I I, I didn't feel as passionate <laughs> as like I wanted to hate it, but I had zero interest. I was like, no, too. no, no, and no, no. I, I, I love, I just, I love everything about it, man. Uh, I can't repeat what y'all just said. I am blown away. Uh, I'm so glad we have this right now, and it's we. I know we have at least two seasons. You know what I'm saying? Two seasons. Have oh, been at, least, ordered. at least. And so, yeah. um, it's yeah, it, it's a dream come true. Like really, I, I am, I am happy, happy, happy. I, I I'm going to watch episode four when we're done with this. I, I got a, two sandwiches in the oven. I got oh. another bag of chips oh. right here. And I'm gonna watch it again after we're done here. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. I was about to say I thought you hadn't watched it. I didn't want to ruin nothing. Oh no, man. no, I'm gonna watch it again. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it again. Okay, I, yeah. I, I am too. But yeah. um, 
I've already done start giving people nicknames, and I started calling Jeffrey Wakanda forever. I started calling, <laughs> I started calling Carlton Carlton Herman Kane, um, just full of jokes with this yeah. thing. And be Avery like you. This is taking priority on my channel with yeah. all the stuff. Come, this is taking priority over power. It's Ooh, taking priority over. Shit. Oh yeah, oh my yeah, bad. it's got to. It's got that's to. your man. That's it's, boy, that's okay. That's what's up. That's <laughs> bigger. That's bigger coming from you than me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's taking yeah. priority. It's it's, def it's definitely taking priority over that. It's actually going to take priority over Snowfall, even though I'm gonna do those shows. I've I've told you guys I like to keep my channel where I'm only reviewing at the same time only two shows because of my time, just because of the schedule, my kid, my training. Um, other stuff I'm working on. Right, right. I try to just do two shows. <clears throat> I have got so many theory videos I'm going to put up in between the weeks uh, when this is off. Like, we got to talk about my man Wakanda Forever, Jeffrey. As a matter of fact, let's dive on into episode four. Bruh, this, this is not your mama's Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not your mama's Will Smith. And this definitely ain't your mama's Hillary. But take a look at my man, Wakanda Forever Jeffrey. This dude is on another level. <laughs> yo, yo, let me tell you something. <laughs> Bro, Will Smith took a risk going this dark because every every white dude that's into QAnon and into that bullshit is talking about, oh, the show is too woke. No, Negroes. Oh, God, the show is, is perfect. This yeah. Right, it's real. It is re it's what's happening. And the way they are portraying this, at first, you kind of was wondering about Uncle Phil. But you, we knew Uncle Phil back in the day, even though he had been surrounded by all the rich people. And when you get surrounded by rich people, ladies and gentlemen, if you're a minority, you start seeing less and less of us. So sometimes you become absorbed in the crowd that you're having to be hanging with. Mm -hmm. Not then, not now, has Uncle Phil conformed to all their foolishness. He still knows he's black. He still knows he's got a struggle. And in this iteration of being a darker, more gritty show, Jeffrey is the fixer. Yes. He's the fix. And I'm going to put together a great theory video to knock your socks off. Jeffrey is the fixer. Having said that, fellas, I'm going to kick it to you this time, B.A.B. How are you feeling about the direction they're going with Jeffrey? Um... Per perfect way to put it. He is the fixer. Uh, he is uh, Miss Pope from Scandal. And it's necessary too. It, it, to be honest with you, if you didn't have, given the status that Uncle Phil has in the show, and this being a drama, not a comedy, a reimagining of the original, you have to mm -hmm. have somebody like Jeffrey in, in the fold, you know what I'm saying? In your back pocket, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, you're going after your district attorney, you, you got all this money. You know, there are always going to be sharks in the water. So it would be stupid not to have somebody like that in, in the role. So that makes perfect organic sense right there. But then the actor himself fulfilling the role is just knocking it out the park. You know, like, I, I, I am terrified. You know, he don't even have to have no lines of dialogue. Just his seeing his presence in the room, you know, mm -hmm. is going to be intimidating. You're like, okay, damn, let me make sure my shoes are tied so when I walk, I don't trip and he think I'm a threat and chop my head off or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's how he's coming across in a threatening and friendly way. Now, I may piss y'all off what I'm about to say about that clip you just showed us because mm -hmm. I, I don't know my critic hat is coming on. I didn't feel this way the first time I saw it. I Ultimately, I don't care. It was still a great scene, but when I think about it, when I look at it again, that's unrealistic dialogue because... That, that was just exposition for us to know what was going on. But those two characters would have already known that between each other. So, you know, this is the way it came out talking about, we already paid him 10000 Well, the other guy knows that already. So it's like, I don't know. Y'all may disagree, but I, I I don't know. Watching it the second time, I was just kind of like, eh. You know, I I, I, I mean, I, I, I was, it's a nitpick. I don't care. The show is still fire. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. kind of, but kind of like you, one take, when you was critiquing the, the, the sevens and the elevens in the pool, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Something you notice, you know what I'm saying? You still love the show. It was just something I noticed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Yeah, well, I, mean, I, I we, still we, love where they're going with it, though. I still love where they're, they're going with Jeffrey, though. We I want to see. I want to see him fight. I want to see him fight. Oh, he's gonna fight. We we would notice those little small things, be able because we do it for a living. But there's a whole audience that had to hear that. Like you said, there there's people that had to hear it because they might have glossed over it. They might not have would have. 
understood the gravity of how powerful this Jeffrey is. That's what that was for. Because that dude with the tattoo was the guy that was bodying Will in the beginning of this episode. If you remember, there was a guy with a tattoo outside looking at Will when he was talking to Lisa in the very beginning opening of this episode. That was the guy. He put a body on Will to make sure nothing happened. A tough guy. He's got a connection to the street, which just makes me wonder, oh. are they going to get into the backstory of Jeffrey being CIA over in England the way he was in the original? Question. Are you saying yeah. the guy that had the body on Will that was looking at Will when he was talking to Lisa, are you saying that was a good guy or a bad guy? That was the guy that was talking to Jeffrey. Oh, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. I was thinking that was somebody from Philly that came through that was uh, no, trying to stake him out. Okay. Okay. No, no. Okay, no. Okay. The, 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 the reason they panned on his tattoo okay. uh, in I the guess, beginning. Yeah. So that we, and then when, when he rolled down the window talking to Jeffrey, they panned on it again. They was trying to key tag us to understand that's who it was. But I, look, and one take, I'm going to come to you. I just can't say enough. Not only is Jeffrey, not only are they taking the lure that Jeffrey had in the original that they never talked about and putting it in here, but the Jeffrey we saw back then, he loved those kids. And I'm wondering, are we going to get a baby Nikki as a grandkid or something like that? But he loved those kids. Nikki was his godchild. And you saw a special relationship between him and Ashley. He ain't kept with Hillary all that much, but he loved Ashley. And that's what he did here. He took care of Ashley. She's sneaking off trying to hug and kissing with little boyfriends at 12 years old. Got me thinking, damn, I got a tw I got a, a two-year-old and I got to worry about that in 10 years. Really? Fuck. He took care of her, got her back to the family, and didn't tell on her, which shows you that he's a merciless killer, but he also has a heart for the people that he cares about and the people he's protecting. One take. Floor is yours. Yeah, uh, I don't know if Ashley looking for a little boyfriend. I bet Ashley might be looking for a little girlfriend. But uh, yeah, man, Jeffrey, Jeffrey looking out, and, and I think I, 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 I'm this just, dude, I'm no, he did. What? Wait no, a minute, man! You, man, man you stop it, what? man! You can't, you can't slide in there. Are you trying to say, dude, look like Prince? What you trying to say? No, uh, -uh. I didn't pick oh, it up either. But no. listen to him. I'm, I'm, yeah, go and take no. it away one take, <laughs> <laughs> bro, Ashley. Actually, gay for like, like she. That's something I think they're they're gonna explore with her because she wasn't looking forward to seeing that guy. She like, oh, where's mm -hmm. uh, I can't think of the girl name. Where's so and so? And then when we see right. her later on at the uh, skate rink, she was like mm -hmm. ecstatic, and that, that's not just a hey, my my friends here. No, hey, the person I have a crush on is here. That's what that is. Well, yeah, I felt like. They with the way the story is going, I said someone's got to be gay or lesbian. Someone has to be because they're trying to bring they're trying to bring all the stuff going on in today's society mm -hmm. into this show. And I've been wondering who it was. I didn't think they would take it with Ashley, but I guess I should have known because she's so hippie liberal. She's a flaming liberal at that. So I guess I should have seen that one coming with her. Yeah, yeah. She got a little smart mouth. So yeah, I, I definitely done. She be doing like little, little slide shade, uh, a slick shade and stuff like that. But on to my boy Jeffrey, who, yes. who got all the connections to the street. Somebody uh somebody messaged me today and said, man, uh, this is who Franklin Saint needs to have on his payroll because uh, Jeffrey gets stuff <laughs> done. Jeffrey, he gets stuff <laughs> done. I love what they do. <laughs> with this character because I mean, as big as that damn house is you know it can just be one person like you know what I'm saying so uh, him being over everybody else him I don't I really want to know what him and Uncle Phil's relationship is because they mm -hmm. obviously they're boys but it seemed like yo I don't know if he may have got Phil out of something or Phil might have got him out of something it seemed like they got like some ties that Run a little bit deeper than just like a uh, 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 employer and employee. So I, I'm, I'm I'm excited to see if we are gonna learn a little bit more about that. Mm. So this whole episode was surrounding Uncle Phil trying to become the district attorney and trying to yeah. gin up votes, getting the family together to make a pretty mosaic and to be have a united front for someone who wants to be the strong candidate. Will and Carlton are tasked with canvassing together. They both have an end goal. If you get these votes, 
I'm going to bring your boy Trey out to L.A., Carlton, I'm going to let you go see this car race. Do you guys feel that the exchanges that went between Carlton and Will was the turning around in Carlton that we've been thinking we was going to see? And I'll start with you, B.A. Well, when you say turning around in Carlton, like what, what turnaround do you think we was going to get? Him being more accepting of Will being there, him finally deciding to get along with Will versus be his adversary. Nah, man, they're gonna be going at mm. each other's throats for the whole season. Mm. Yeah, Carlton, no, nah, Carlton ain't mature mm. enough for that. Carlton, the petty as hell. Carlton, mm. <laughs> you gotta, I mean, no, nah, mm. I mean, he care, like, mm. well, he care about Will. Let me take that back, let me dial it back a little bit. He care about Will because when Connor uh put the drugs in his bag, he did look very concerned, like, okay, you took it too far, so. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he is on drugs, and you act different while you're on drugs. So no, yeah, that's true. I, no, I, no, they they gonna be at the, no. He gonna be he gonna be at Will's throat the whole season. He gonna be hating on them the whole season. Uh, this is off. This is a farce. That's that that what you're talking about ain't gonna come to season two, or at least that's what I want right now. You know what I'm saying? Right. After these first four so, episodes, they yeah they could change it up next episode, and I change my mind. But yeah, I, I don't I don't think he turned over a new leaf just yet. The, one take. This is the prediction I made. Right now, Carlton has been living in a rich bubble. He's the man at school because he's a good talking, slick black dude surrounded by white guys who worship him one way or the other one because he's black. He can use big words. He can hold an audience. I said that when something happens where Carlton realizes that all the money and wealth and big words he has is not going to save his ass from being black. Like maybe he's caught on the wrong side of town with Connor and the crew. The police shove his face into the ground. And then he realizes, hey, I'm going to call my daddy. And that, that, no, nothing happened because his ass is black. Is that going to be the turning around for Carlton? And if that happens, it's like B.A. said, that ain't going to happen this season. Oh, no, no, no. So one take, how do you feel about this, this bonding time that Will and Carlton spit with each other? And do you feel like there was any turnaround in Carlton's character toward Will? Okay, a uh, couple things. I'm I'm gonna take it back to the sitcom. It's when they got pulled over in the bins and the police locked them up. Okay. Yeah. And the police mm -hmm. didn't let them out until Phil showed up and went off on them. He said, I'm gonna tie this place with so much litigation that your grandkids are gonna need lawyers. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> until, until Classic. Classic. experiences something like that. No. Mm -hmm. So they, they they have a complete separation and divide between one another. They don't understand each other. Both of them think they are right. And once and like they, they're not doing any job of like convincing the other. They're just arguing. There's mm -hmm. there's no like a, a agreement. That there's no there's no come to terms with each other. None of that. They're just like you know what. And even by the end of this whole thing, they still don't get any closer to that. It's just hey, you believe what you believe. I believe what I believe. You do your thing. I'm gonna do my thing. We won't be involved with each other in those ways at all. Okay. We gonna keep it cordial for the family, but for the most part, yeah, like you. You going about your business, I'm going to go about mine. So that whole connection between the two, camaraderie, did not happen. Even after everything that happened with Carlton trying to go get signatures, he's realizing, like, Will is much better at this. He even, even with Will getting the signatures, it's all about getting the signatures and people registering to vote. Carlton didn't care about that at all. He's like, oh, well, you're doing it this way, and that's not uh the, the way you should be talking to people or telling them how things work. But we're just like, bro. That's because you look at it one way. You going to hey hey GPO you guys uh oh uh, you you should listen to Philip Banks you know he's going to change everything for you people. I'm just like bro get the hell out of here dog. Like, I, I'm sorry. I I I, I of course I'm gonna be on wheels now because I'm I didn't live like cars and you feel me. So somebody I'm gonna need somebody like Will. Who I feel like I can relate to to come talk to me about stuff like this. So. Yeah, that, that divide between those two has not gotten any better at all. <laughs> and when you watch this show, it just reminds you of why if America claims to be a melting pot, everybody needs to experience a little bit of what everybody goes through in their walk of life. I've been really, really poor. 
and I've had to pull myself up and get help and all this bull job to be kind of touching ranks with the way Phil is touching ranks with people. But at every step of the way, there was some resistance. And Carlton, he's been stuck in his bubble. He can't even relate to the poor people that they're trying to canvas with. Like, you can't go to that, those people's homes and use words that's got like 10 consonants in it. You can't do that. Now, uh, granted, Will shouldn't be lying to them either. Now, Will should be walking in the gray area, which is not lying, but it ain't necessarily the 100% truth. However, you have to have these people have something they can relate to. So Carlton, he's not talking about anything they can relate to. Will at least brought up the subject of the police brutality, all the stuff going on with the police. Um, and so I'm with B. Avery. I don't see Carlton turning around. I don't see them having a bond and a relationship, not this season. I still think that these two are going to be a, a um, relationship of convenience to each other just to get through. Just yeah. to get through. And, and I thought Carlton already knew the real reason why Will was there in the first place when they was having this discussion right here. Uh, probably not. But what was Will lying about, though, when you said he was lying? Will, Will said something about Uncle Phil, something about defunding the police. Uncle Phil didn't really say he was going to do that before Will knew it. He said it at the end, but at the time Will said mm. it, it hadn't been discussed already. Okay. But it, he wound up doing it anyway. Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I, I got to talk about them because at first I wasn't feeling the new Uncle Phil because I wanted my Uncle Phil to be a massive male because that was part of the Uncle Phil we used to have. But this guy, he's growing on me now. He's, he's growing oh, on yeah. me. But he's growing on me because that damn Aunt Vi is smoking <laughs> and she's playing the hell. She playing the hell out of her role. She actually has embodied the voice and all the magic. But if you guys you guys watch this and you paid attention, Aunt Vi sacrificed her dream of being an artist to go work in the school part time so that fulfill could fulfill his dream. Because in the beginning he took a backseat for her till the kids came. I got a bone to pick you, with that. Oh, uh, hey, well you get to go first, brother. We'll talk about how you feel about this. And now he's asking her to tone it down a little bit when they go out, and she's already mad that you know she done fixed her hair. She don't say as much now. He wants her to tone it down some more. She's kind of a little frustrated with that. So, behavior, you get the floor. She tripping uh, to me. <laughs> um, I, 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 that, we're going to see how that develops. I don't want to come to any conclusion just yet. I, I'm just speculating. Uh, mm -hmm. But she's coming across to me right now as somebody that doesn't <clears throat> communicate well, that has all these internal feelings and not expressing herself. Because you 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 know you made my that. you made my eyebrow raise because I was thinking this too. Well, first of all, when Phil made the comment talking about uh, she used to be an artist or something like that, she got mad. Mm -hmm. Now I can understand her feeling some type of way about that initially, but he didn't he didn't go back and forth with her. He realized what he said. I was like, okay, hey, maybe it came across this way, and he apologized immediately. And she still acted like she had a stick up her butt. So that kind of makes me feel like she petty a little bit. Two, um. Uh, why, uh, why? I don't know. It seemed like she got a, a bunch of resentment built up because she did sacrifice and put her dream aside so that he can do this and the whole family can do this. But at the same time, was that the agreement? Did you say, did you ever come to the field and say, hey, you know, I still want to paint? Because this reply could be like, well, of course, I support you. Well, well, I didn't know because you're doing this. Well, I didn't know you wanted this. You got to let me know. If, you, I'm, I'm, if you're going to support me, I'm going to support you. I can adjust this so we can both win our dreams. I don't want you to be 62 years old and you you have regrets in life. That's where the speculation part comes because we haven't got there yet, but that's just where my brain is going. That's why I'm thinking they're going to take it. Um, did I answer your question though? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I I'm, I'm expanding on... No, no, no. I'm expanding on what you're saying before I pass it to uh, one take. So I agree with what you said about she's having communication issues. Not only is she having that, but her friends is in her ear too. And her daughter, her oldest daughter, who she broke a sacrifice for, is just pissing her in the face and throwing in the face that she gave up her dream, in essence, to be a mom. And that's something, that you, you know, women talk about the fragile ego of a male. You do not tell a woman that being a mom is secondary to anything else. Because that is like women take pride in knowing that they can nurture, grow, and take care of children, which she has done. I agree with you that 
she probably just needs to talk to Phil because Phil is not that type of dude. If you talk to him, you clearly see he's an understanding brother. He's what black men needed to have seen on TV. We've got that. Mm -hmm. And whenever she says something, he don't never say to her, shut up, I'm not going to listen. He listens to her. He That's makes adjustments. Yeah. And, and maybe it is as simple as because her daughter is basically pooping on her and all her friends are in her ear, especially the chick that played on Army Wives that has shown up here, is all in her ear, kind of being, um, what's the right term for me to say? I don't want to say sister girl, but that, that girl does not like Phil. And she don't, uh, she don't care for Jeffrey either. Hence, Jeffrey tried to hit on her and she just ignored him. And it, it kind of feels like she is causing more of a wedge in their relationship, even though what she's saying is right, you can do what you're doing. Vivian needs to talk to Phil about these moves so that he can get on one accord with what she needs in life right now. And we being one, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I don't want to cut you off, bro. Um, well, all I was gonna say, if we being one hundred, they have enough money where Vivian could go do painting if that's what she so wanted to do. If you know we're what I'm gonna saying? Yeah. We're gonna, what, what, we gonna be doing that. What, what I was gonna say real quick is um me personally, I cannot be with a woman or marry a woman or start a family if that's gonna get in the way of my goals, my dreams, you know what I'm saying, my passion. And that has to be realistic. I'm not saying that okay, hey, you know, if I start a, I, I want to be an astronaut, you know, like you know, if I if we if we get married, I can't be an astronaut, then I want to marry you. No. But I, and I don't want a woman. I don't want to. I don't want a woman to marry me or start a family with me if she's if if that if if marriage to me or us having kids is going to stop you from pursuing your your past and your dreams. You know what I'm saying? Your heart. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not going to make that commitment. We can make the commitment. I can still help you do that. We can still raise a family. We can still uh, uh, get married and all that. But I'm still going to help you uh you know fulfill your passion and i just feel like that conversation hasn't taken place or at least it hasn't in a long time between these two and i feel that phil is willing to have the conversation but i i, I Viv just need to open her mouth a little bit i could be wrong but uh i mean i hope i, I hope that made sense to y'all but uh I, I could be wrong but hopefully hopefully they get it worked out between them yeah they they probably gonna work it out and 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 being honest some for someone who's been married 12 years Certain things you are going to sacrifice in a relationship. It doesn't mean you sacrifice it forever. It right. means you might have to sacrifice it for a short window, which I feel like that short window period has, you know, has come where they've oh. gotten over the hump and now she can do those things that she wants to do. But the problem is going to come. The problem probably, well, him being a DA won't mess up her from doing art. But if he goes further into some other political realm, that could be a, a problem for, for them if she wanted to do art. But one take, jump on in there, brother. Oh, yeah. Uh, man, I don't even know why I jump in. I'm going to just try to double dash this wherever. real quick. Whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of with y'all, but I'm, I'm going to give a little pushback. I think the moment when they was in there talking and he called her a painter, and I just like, even the, the moment he said, I'm like, ah, dude, you should say artist. Like, you, know, you should say artist. <laughs> I, don't, I, I think it's just like, just a simple little word thing. Obviously, yeah. I don't think he was yeah. thinking in that moment. I'm just like, no. But yeah, I, I, the way she looked, I'm like, yeah, you finna have to hear about that when they leave. You know what I'm saying? You, you finna have he, to hear about look, that. He belittled her one thing. Like, like it, for example, that would be like, you know, you are a doctor of medicine and someone runs in there and calls you a nurse. Mm. You know, you belittle that person beyond their credentials. She is an artist. Your little you know, hospital job. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That is, yeah. What, that is yeah. exactly. Yes. You know, whenever somebody put a look in front of something, right. that they kind of mm -hmm. like, they not really impressed. You know, that's, that's what it right. felt like to her. So I, I respect her for like, you know, getting up on them. And him like, yo, you, I'm going to need you to cheat. Now, granted, this the part right here, I'm kind of with him. He even said, he like, yo, remember when I was at the art show talking or whatever? And you were just like, hey, this is my world. I think I will be the same way. Now, you know, all black women are strong and beautiful. But if you tell them, hey, I'm going to need you to like tone it down a little bit, they not going to, you know, be too happy about that. 
I, oh, I, no. it, it, oh, it, no. it, it depends. It depends on the maturity of that woman right. and the arc of your relationship. And have you as a man shown maturity, which Phil has in the past when these situations come up, you've had my back and now I got yours. Because I'm telling you guys, this Vivian has said a lot of grown folks things that people in reality have to meet with. Like when Hillary messed up that opportunity and a lot of people agree, you know, don't sell your soul and all that. Vivian grew up in an era where black people had to sell their soul a little bit to move forward so that they can get their point across and then come back out with who they really are. And nowadays we don't have to do that as much. And um, I do feel like one take, there are, like if I tell my wife, look, honey, I'm gonna need you to use certain grammar around this particular crowd because I want them to understand what is really going on before we hit them with everything. That's how I would explain it to her. She'd be cool with that, you know, and my wife is a doctor, so she'd be cool with that. So it just really depends on the woman, their maturity level, and them having an understanding of the greater picture. But back to right. you. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. See, see, I'm not married. You know, I want to know these things. You know? <laughs> Appreciate that insight, my brother. Appreciate, Appreciate that hey, insight. Bro, you know bro, I, I'm, I'm, past the, I'm past the decade going on decade number two. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. I, 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 think, I, think, I like that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like the whole, I'm loving the connection between the two though, because uh, yeah, they yeah. do compromise for each other and mm-hmm. they, I think they're great parents, man. I, I think that's yeah. one of the biggest things I'm seeing that they're, they're great parents. Even though you still see the generational divide between them and their kids. Mm-hmm. Because, man, I, I, I think it's so tough to be a parent right now considering the like how these kids are coming up now compared to how a lot of, like, other people were raised and, like, their times and, like, having to adjust to all these different things. But I think they're doing a, a good job. Well, for the most part, the whole the, – the, the divide with Hillary is probably, like, the, the biggest one, though. You know, the, but the, 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 the connection between Aunt Viv and Uncle Phil, I think I really appreciate it. And even when – even after all, everything was said and done, and he came back to it like, hold up, I like I know I told you to cheer earlier, but like I really need some help in this. Because I feel I feel like Bill still kind of like tied to it. You know, still got that like that Philly, that Philly street sense to her. She do. She do. She do. And and there's there's some things that I'm wondering from the old, are we gonna see remade in this one? Like, you know, he, uh, she had um what three other sisters. And they was all firecrackers. You know what I'm saying? Like, you weren't running up on none of them sisters and saying any kind of mess you want to say. So I'm wondering we're going to get that. That iconic dance scene from Vivian in the first one. When she went in there and them white girls were talking junk to her, she went in there and did that ballet dance, went out and snapped that. Foot. We got to mm. see that again. Mm. And I just think that the levels with this Aunt Viv is just going to keep growing and growing and growing. Yeah. I, I don't think we're going to get that scene. I think the name, the uh, because remember they were talking about the uh, the three names of, of, of people who was breaking into the uh, art industry. I think uh, the other two are white women. That's what I oh. think. So I think when Viv come back and like she's going to get us probably on like a, 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 a on those a kind of show or a gal, gal or something mm-hmm. like that where she's going to be showing her art, she's going to be with them again and they're going to see her art. And that's gonna be that moment of satisfaction that she gets. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like the dance gotcha. scene. I can dig it. Yeah, I can dig it. I, I can, can dig, dig that it. too. So speaking of them, let's talk about Hillary. You know, I'm gonna get you guys out of here probably mm. after this last thing. But how y'all feeling about Hillary, man? I mean, she makes some good points, but then again, um, she, what? How can I say this without? I'm just. I'm gonna say it. Like Hillary makes some good points about loving self. And wanting to be individual. She she gets that. But at the same time, she's not realizing that, look, it's easy for me to make these decisions I'm making because I'm living off my parents who are rich. I'm living in a pool house that's the size of most people's real house. And I just feel like if she was someone in middle class or poor, she would have took that last opportunity, even though they told her to tone it down. So she didn't take that. And in this episode... She took an opportunity into the influencer house and fellas, that is a real thing. 
So if you guys Google search influencer house, they do have these places. And she's going to go there. And Vivian, in the end, just, you know, I feel like Vivian was happy for her. But at the same time, she's trying to look out for her and give her the... Re nobody does nothing free. Nobody. And that is the honest to goodness truth. People think, oh, well, it's a nonprofit. No, there's some money being spent. I ran one. I know where the, I know where the leaks is in it. There's some, there's, there is nothing altruistic in the planet except for maybe 1% of things done. B. Avery, I give it to you. What's up with Hillary? Oh, yeah, man. Well, first, uh, what's her real name? Coco Jones or something like that? Yeah, Coco. Um, yeah, Coco. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love her as Hillary. You know what I'm saying? She's I do. doing great. I do, too. Uh, she's it. fine. She's fine as hell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like she, she the whole bad. cast, man. That yeah. whole cast is just amazing. I mean, just beautiful black, beautiful black skin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, she she killing it with the outfits and stuff like that. But man, she has no experience in life. You know, she's very mm -hmm. naive. She's very naive right now. She tripping, being a little bit emotional. You know, I mean, like you said, her mom is just trying to look out for her. So I'm like, wait a minute, what is the arrangement for you just to move in? Oh, nothing. It's free. It's just so ignorant. You know, but. She doesn't know that, you know, she's what, 20, 21 mm -hmm. years old, um, you know, so that's mm -hmm. expected coming from somebody, um, uh, you know, at, at, her, at, her, at her age, you know, in the show, uh, but she definitely needs to humble herself, you know, I love the way her mama's checking her like, hey, okay, well, hey, if you want to go out and do this and do that and do this, okay, hey, we'll do it on your own, I mean, but she tripping, I mean, like, she needs to realize the blessing that she has to where she can be out of high school still live at home in this mansion rent free and, you know you just, just be stacking your bread stacking your paper you know what i'm saying and if you're living off your parents you got to still abide by our rules i don't care if you're 29 years old you in they crib yeah. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and so if you want to do what you want to do move out and there's nothing wrong with that so i'm with the mama on this hillary trip and i love hillary i love everything about her but you know she she had acted her age so it, it, it's just funny seeing it you know yeah um, one take i give it to you and um, <clears throat> this is this is something that a lot of families go through. Um, you know, Hillary's home. She's taking that gap year, make it two, <laughs> and trying to find herself. And I'm one who says, you know, I'm all for education, but I know some people don't want to get a form of education. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you can find some kind of a skill that can allow you to provide for yourself and give you the quality of life you want is nothing wrong if you don't go to college. Nothing wrong with that. There's plenty right. of YouTubers that ain't go to college that's doing great. Right. So having said that, one take talk to me about this this Hillary thing where you see it going, and do you think that we're gonna finally get to see Jazz smash? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh damn! You yeah. just you just ripped the bandaid off. Uh, hey I man, just, uh, Hulk just, smash. Uh, as far as like the mom and Hillary, I told that's. That's one of the things that's that generational divide. Um, I think mm -hmm. if anybody tell their parents, hey, I'm going to live in this place and uh, it's, it's free, uh, it's like, what? No. Really, like, I, I, looking at Hillary, she's obviously beautiful. It's like, you're going to live in a house with uh, a bunch of strangers. But, you know, those houses, those things are happening. Like, people go in there, they create content together, they have to make so much money and you know, bring so much traction to each other's uh, page and stuff like that just for people right. to build with uh, one another. Mm -hmm. But when you explain that to somebody who doesn't know anything about that life or that side of the world, you know what I'm saying? And, and, I mean, I could imagine, like, me telling my mama or the, my grandma, I, you know, they'd be like, what, you want to go do what? Like, yeah. nah, that, that, don't, that, don't, that don't make sense to me. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. What? <laughs> and I... But but as like Hillary, <laughs> been able to articulate what was going on though. That I, I'm just like, instead of immediately snapping back at your mama, like mm -hmm. give her the the rundown because she obviously doesn't understand it, you right. know. And you know exactly what it like. You don't know everything it entails because you don't. Hillary's never been in that house, so she still doesn't know all the details and how things are gonna be. Because let's say she does go into the house. And she, her, her follower, she ain't gaining enough followers quick enough. They boom your right. ass and get somebody who the next person's on to come up. So she still has to be prepared mm -hmm. for all that. But as far as like Hillary being naive, I think that's why I loved her interaction with Jazz in this one. Because Jazz mm. is like, oh, so Jazz basically like, yo, you complain about what and what? Oh, wow. So 
That's what you have to complain about. <laughs> the fact that you, your parents are putting you out and you actually have to look for an apartment. The fact that, like, you, <laughs> even she was having a conversation with Will earlier about just, hey, I don't have uh, the money to do this, or, or, or if I want to live in an apartment, it's going to be like multiple other people in there. I'm just like, yeah, Hillary, that's pretty much what you're going, you're going to have to go through. Like, you, you just get not. You've been breathing through life. You haven't had any worries, okay? Like, so I like that Jazz is kind of like bringing her down to earth a little bit, showing her like, yeah, this this is pretty much what everybody has to go through uh, who's mm-hmm. not rich. So I, I, I'm excited. And I th- I like the connection between the two. Yeah. Because she's yeah. showing her, him, him different things. You know, probably gonna like you know uh, boost his record store up and stuff like that because I, mm-hmm. I, I was surprised myself. Jazz didn't have a, a, a IG or anything like that. Like that's how you promote your businesses, you know. But kind of leans into who he is. He got the records. I mean, he got the vinyls and stuff like that. The old school car. So he seemed to be you know more old school than this. He got like he got an old soul, I guess I would say. So yeah, yeah I, I think yeah. they those two are gonna be able to teach each other a lot of different things moving forward. Absolutely, man. And and I noticed that too. This ja- this um Jason Weaver looking Jazzy Jeff, he's got an old soul. <laughs> that's for sure. He's got an old soul. And I think that's gonna work well, not just for um Hillary, but I think that's gonna work well for Will and eventually Ashley, because Jazz is gonna have a relationship probably with everybody. And I could just see him being a calm, cool, and presence is gonna help. And at the end of the day, Will, let's keep this thing 100. Will need to get some counseling because he comes out the bathroom, see Lisa Daddy, and not just this, but the situation that happened with him and QAnon boy last episode. He keeps having these painful flashbacks that he needs to work through, and I really and truly feel like he needs to go seek some therapy, which brings me up to my last point I want to room with you guys, and I got a clip for this because I think that it involves three different people, but I think it's going to have a bigger impact on Will. Take a look at this. I got some great news, too. What's up? Rashad is dead. What? We got to celebrate that shit when I fly out. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to celebrate. Mm. You already know Will's like, damn. That Jeffrey, I'm going to quit calling him G. I might have start calling him K for killer. He he taking fools out. But the thing with Will, if Will is traumatized just simply by being arrested, how do you think this trauma and this secret is going to play on Will knowing that the reason Rashad is dead is probably because of Jeffrey? I give it to you one take. Uh, man, the, okay, I'm going to start off with the trauma. And uh, he is traumatized pretty bad. I, I mean, I, I, I didn't, I didn't realize how much effect it had on him. But I guess you know everything affects people different because he already mm-hmm. seen Lisa's dad, and then he realized he's a cop. He's just like, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't rock with cops. You know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I understand that. I think you know what I'm saying. A lot of times people just, you know, especially as black people, you just naturally are turned off by cops. Anyway, I know, I, I know that's how I am, you know what I'm saying? I'm, of course, there are good cops out there, but it just like you naturally turned off by them, so you you kind of looking at him a little bit different. Uh, now, as far as when he got the news from Trey that Rashad was dead, yeah, he's looking at like, damn, I'm in a house. I don't know. I think I thought I knew something about them, but I don't know nothing, man, because uh, they told cause mm-hmm. the way G told him, hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He know, like, yeah, we had something to do with that. And like, this was a dope boy who I looked at it like powerful. But for them to like tell me not to worry about it and they take care of it just like that, who the hell I'm in the house with? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> who, who, like, what, these, what other secrets do these people got going? Now, we're reacting totally different for me. Because I would have been happy as hell. I would have been doing flips. Like, oh, he dead? Oh, shit. Trey, you coming out here? We finna, we finna really celebrate because, bro, this is. <laughs> He shot my homeboy. And he literally told me, yo, you better be vested up when I see you. Yeah, he should have been vested up at the strip club. I'm making jokes and everything. Get in what it is. So I don't, I don't know why. I'm not going to say why Will isn't excited, 
But like, I I would have reacted a lot different from him. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna give it to you, B. But let me let me say this to one take. Considering I've had I, my life has taken me through a lot of different issues, one reason Will could be feeling some kind of way is because what if Will ever crosses this family himself? What if Will ever decides, you know what, y'all ain't for me. I want to do my own thing. And he crossed him enough to make Jeffrey and Wakanda forever upset. He could be thinking about that. You know, like, I bet not make these people mad because Wakanda forever can hear he makes things disappear. So on one hand, he might be happy, you know, on the low low that his big problem is gone. But on the other hand, he could be feeling trapped at the same time. Like, bro, I can't never cross these people. I can't never disagree okay. with these people. I can't never be in a position where the things that I desire and need will supersede this family because if I ever cross them, I got secrets on them that they feel like I'm a threat. They could neutralize the threat. Having said that, I give it to you, yeah. um, B. Avery. Uh, to be honest, I respectfully disagree with that. Um, okay. I don't I don't see that at all, um, because for one, you should just have it in your soul to not want to double cross somebody in the first place. I mean, it should just be embedded in you to where, you know, if you do somebody wrong, there are going to be consequences, you know. So, well, let, let's just say it's not a double cross because it doesn't a lot of these family situations don't always in a double cross. But let me give you a prime example. Um, if I decide that I want to go to the NBA draft, um my freshman year of college and my mm -hmm. parents is adamant. No, you're not. Even though I can make this money, they want me to finish college because that's more important to them to the point where we knock down, drag out, have a fight. The fact that I would know that you've got a killer in the midst would make me think twice about the own decision. I want to have for my personal life because I'm worried about what y'all got. And Will could definitely go to the NBA. I don't think there's any family out there that would kill their own son or nephew because they didn't go to the college they didn't want. You know, okay. Like, well, we got Tariq killing his daddy because he didn't teach him how to sell drugs. That's completely different. That's I mean, TV. they 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 live in a murderous lifestyle. Like the reason Jeffrey murdered uh uh what's his name? That's not Dante Rashad. You know? Rashad, Rashad is because he was he was he was literally threatening threatening the family, like. All Will has to do is take the phone to the police and be like, this person is sending me text messages saying that they're going to kill me. So for one, Jeffrey is 100% justified for killing Rashad, even if he has something to do with it. I mean, he's a, not only is he threatening my family, we paid him off. So it, it is it is 100% um, justified to me. I don't I, I, I don't know. I just I don't I don't think that uh, I, I, I don't think Will will be afraid enough to like, oh man, let me go to the college or let me not disagree with them or they're going to murder me. That's, I don't know, that, that's a stretch. Now, I, I, I can, now going to one take about his reaction, I feel you. I would have been happy as well. But on the flip side, <laughs> I can understand him having a little white, like, damn, like, okay, what house am I in? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he shouldn't be, he shouldn't be like afraid of it. He, he should be, he, he should take a step back kind of assess like you know assess the situation like whoa what's going on but he should be happy he should be doing flips and um and stuff like that and so i think it was another point i was gonna make i can't remember but yeah that the 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 reaction uh from will is weird and uh yeah i just think i think that jeffrey is uh is justified in in killing rashad if if he if they are the killers so yeah and and here here's my thing if See you having a, a a reaction like, damn, hold on, wait, 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 what the hell just happened? You having that reaction later on when you sit back and think about it. But the moment you hear, man, so and so got popped. What? Oh, for real? We was at we had the club, shot him up in the strip club. Oh, damn, that's crazy. He shouldn't have been talking shit. You know, that's the, your immediate reaction. Right. I think you, no. you laying down in the bed, you just chilling like. Uh, uh, Wait, no, no. <laughs> we, we, if Will, if Will would not have had that conversation with Jeffrey, he probably would have been reacting the way y'all wanted him to react. But right now, his mind is on. I had something to do with this dude dying, and I'm sure Will don't want to have anything to do with someone's life being taken away. I, I, I just don't see it that way. 
I, 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 I just, I just don't because he threatened his life. If somebody threatens your life, you have a right to defend yourself. You just yeah, do. You do. You do, I mean, but it's not your homeboy it's already. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's true. That's true. But you talk to anybody who's in the military who is fighting for freedom and people shooting at them, it doesn't change that they have trauma, that they have taken a life, even though the person was trying to take their life. Okay. I, I, I feel you there. Yeah. There, I, 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 res I respect that. I know for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> they just <laughs> shot my partner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, so and so just got hit up. They dead. <laughs> Look, I I'm agree with y'all. You know what I'm saying? I, I agree with y'all, but he, I, the only reason I feel he wasn't um, Crip walking and West Coast walking is just simply because <laughs> he is aware of who's done it. If he would never have had a conversation and known that Jeffrey could possibly have something to do with it, his reaction would have been a whole lot different. Man, if Hold I found out my dad is a good. stealth assassin, bro, I'm like, teach me the way. I've always been, I'll be going, I'll be going, I'll be going to Jeffrey talking about train me, cuz train me now. I want to know we'll this, is the, way. Street, this is the way. This is the way. We'll see more street than just like, nah, nah, nah bro. Yeah, we smoking on this pack tonight, bro. Rashad packing the air, bro. I don't know, man. That's just me. <laughs> Adrian, we talked about we talked about Killer Jeffrey a few minutes ago. We're talking about him again now. But um Jeffrey's he's another one who's still in the show. And before I get you fellas out here, give me your top three best performances on this show so far. Who have been your top three best actor Ooh. actors? Just I'm giving you I was gonna make y'all do one, but that ain't enough. So I'm gonna give you three. So wow. I'm gonna go last. I'm gonna go I'm last. Not. Um B. Avery, I'm gonna let you go first. I gotta say the main lead, Jabari Banks. You know when he was crying yeah. and stuff. Yeah. That's uh, I probably gotta give it to Carlton too, Carlton too yes. because when he on them drugs, he really like he finna hurt somebody. And uh, yeah. and let me see, uh, it ain't Ashley, it ain't Hillary. I probably say um, who's the other person? Um, my goodness, I said I said Carlton, Will, and yeah, Vivian, yeah. Vivian, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What you got, one tape? Yeah, see, I, I'm, I was almost with you. I'm gonna say uh, definitely will because I mean that that's part of the thing you have. You have to hook us with him first, and, and he definitely. I'm a fan, 100 percent a fan. Fan. I also say Carlton because I think they're trying to make you like kind of despise him. 100% despise him already. Like, <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm so ready for the turnaround. To where he becomes one of my favorite characters, but like right now, despise him. And I'm gonna have to go with Uncle Phil for two different moments. <sighs> it's the moment at the basketball court when he was talking mm. to Will. Mm -hmm. It's the moment at the uh at the skating rink where he pretty much like defunded the police and like he really stood on it right there, even though one of his friends, who is a, uh the chief of police, was standing right there. So I'm like, I'm, I'm with them. <laughs> I'm I, I'm so torn because I'm with y'all. I'm with y'all with Carlton. I'm definitely with y'all with Will Jabari Banks is killing it. I, I I yesterday when I when I saw the third episode, I was like Vivian was in my top mm -hmm. three, but then mm -hmm. I saw what the dad did, and I'm like, man, y'all kind of like one A one B. But yeah, at the, yeah. the, the same time, man, Jeffrey done moved up into consideration now. So a, a, as of right now, I'm, I'm probably going to stick with Vivian. But Jeffrey okay. has moved up into high consideration on my part because obviously you can see the full setup of what his scope is going to be for this family. And you know Phil is going to be the DA. And with Jeffrey oh, yeah. doing security and all that, the threats is only going to get worse because district attorney is the person that's prosecuting the quote unquote bad guys. And yeah. he's in the, L the LA district. They got some bad guys. They've got some bad some guys. Serious. Like, serious yeah. Bad so, guys. um, you know, for now I'm going to go Vivian. I'm going I'm to go with everything B. Avery said, but just know I've got uncle Phil in mind and I definitely got Jeffrey in mind. Okay. You know, so, okay. Well, la ladies and gentlemen, that is our review. Let these brothers get out of here and get some rest. Be sure to come check out B. Avery on Sunday. I will be popping Thank up. You. 
This is his 50th anniversary, ladies and gentlemen. He's been doing his live show for 50 times. You've got to come support this man. All 150 of y'all watching us tonight, come support B. Avery for the Big 50. He's guaranteeing it's going to be a massive show. One take is going to be there. I'm going to be there. Some other surprise folks is going to be there. And while you wait for that, subscribe to their channels. And uh, One Take, what you got going on on your channel this weekend? Oh, man, what do I got? Oh, uh, a video that I just had sitting in the draft. It was like uh, I did a breakdown of that DC, the World Need Heroes video. Uh, go check out my Peacemaker season finale review. You now we got that Euphoria review coming up Sunday. Uh, I reviewed a couple mm. of rom-coms this week. Oh, uh, I got okay. a couple more I got to upload. Uh, that's all I can think of at the moment. But they, they're some good videos, people. I'm telling you. I mean, trust me on that. Got you. And B. Avery, what you got going on, bro? You've got a lot of stuff up there, man. You done reviewed oh, yeah. all these movies. What's going on with you this weekend? Appreciate it, man. Of course, like you said, thank you for the plug for my number 50 show. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody brought it to my attention, like, hey, B, you know that's the same time as an NBA All-Star game. And I was like, oh, I didn't, I forgot all about this. So I don't know if that's <laughs> uh, going to be an issue or not. But uh, come through for that. Uh, I just posted my review for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is on uh, Netflix, so you can check it out. Also posted my review for Uncharted with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg. Check it out. Uh, I did a recap review with Struggles TV Tyra for episode four of Bel Air. Uh, checked it out. And also uh, my recap for the season finale of uh, Peacemaker is on my channel, too. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me I'm sorry. I'll also have my Euphoria videos posted on Sunday. And if I have time, I will uh, uh, upload my review for Death on the Nile uh, with Letitia Wright and uh, Gal Gadot and Army Hammer. I've recorded it. I just got to edit it. If I have time, I'll try to get, a, get that up by Sunday, too. But I still got a lot of uh, videos and stuff I got to put together for the show. Uh, the pressure's on now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's what I got going on in my, in my world over here. So, ladies and gentlemen, hang with these brothers. By the way, if you like these brothers, I got a little secret for y'all. They're going to be back with me Thursday night to review the first episode of Snowfall. Will, will that take precedence over Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the new version called Bel-Air? I'll let you guys know because they both come out on Wednesday. So stay oh. tuned. I'm, I, I got I got a lot of binging to do. I'm still in season one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, I don't gave you the cheat code, man. All you need to do is jump to season three. Just jump on into season three. It'll catch you up. It'll get you. It'll, no. Yes. 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 Be Avery. Trust me. For 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 work based purposes, just jump to season three, and then if you need to go backwards, go backwards. Jump to season three for work gotcha. purposes. Trust me. You got to trust gotcha. me. Okay. So that's going to do it for us, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, everybody. Mike Shun, thank you for that super chat, my brother. And I agree with you. He was making those facial expressions. And I think there was something behind it. I might be able to get you guys a theory video up by Monday. Till that next Sex is Hell video, which will be Sunday. We'll see you. Peace. Peace.